Outfit lawyer George Bieber represented every big name in the outfit for almost three decades, including Gambler Eddie Vogel, Bug Moran, Murray Humphreys, Jake Guzik Felix Alderigio, Al Capone's brothers Ralph and John, Tony Accardo, and L.A. gangster by way of Chicago, Mickey Cohen. When Cohen got out of prison after serving a sentence for income tax evasion in 1958, Bieber lent him $22,500 to help him get back on his feet. Bieber and his law partner Mike Brodkin were known in the mob as the B and B Boys. Aside from the cream of the underworld, the firms also represented run-of-the-mill swindlers, murderers, and even defendants charged with malicious mischief. However, their bread and butter came from the outfit. In the 1950s, they were on a $250,000 a year retainer from the outfit to show up in court to obtain freedom on habeas corpus writs for mobsters. On October 2, 1950, Senator Estes Kefauver received an anonymous letter about the murder of police Captain Bill Drury. Kefauver read the letter three days later during the start of the hearings held in Chicago so that it would become part of the official record files. The letter read Jack, Jake, Guzik, and Charles Fischetti ordered Lieutenant Bill Drury killed. Guzik sent word to his north side triggerman Dominic Nuccio and two other Dominics, called the three Doms, and Nuccio supplied three shotguns and a .45 caliber pistol for the job. After the killing, the killers returned to Nuccio's saloon and hid the guns. Everyone knows the Doms' last names. Now go and get them lined up for the electric chair. They have good, crooked lawyers known as BB Boys. The three Doms in question were Dom Brancata, Dom DiBella, and Dom Nuccio. Michael Brodkin was brought into the organization by gambler Billy Skidmore. He in turn brought in Bieber, who took care of the court duties. Brodkin devised a method of dividing up the millions skimmed from the Las Vegas casino in the late 1950s and early 1960s. The cash was delivered to Brodkin's office monthly by a mobster's wife who traveled from Chicago to Vegas and back again via railroad. Upon her arrival in Chicago, Brodkin's firm would book her a room at the expensive Ambassador East Hotel. The next day she would deliver the cash to Brodkin's office where the Chicago portion was taken and held for a representative from the bosses. Bieber enjoyed the work. His favorite client was Dion O'Banion since he and Bieber had started out together as sluggers for the old Chicago Herald and Examiner in the newspaper circulation wars. Our job, he recalled, was to dump over the other guy's delivery trucks. Bieber's favorite charity was Joseph Pops Panksko, Chicago's inept and outlandish burglary king, whom Bieber represented free of charge because he enjoyed the challenge of seeing how long he could keep Panksko out of jail. In 1947, one acquittal for two South Side Hoods arrested in a gambling raid and then told Judge William V, Daily, now I have a request to make, Your Honor. I wonder if we can get back the record sheets so we can pay off. In 1952, in a tiny act of defiance to the outfit, Bieber was a pallbearer for his friend David Zatz, a bookie who was shot to death and stuffed into the trunk of a car. Then he appeared in court as defense lawyer for a suspect arrested in connection with the slaying. When the humorless and stern state's attorney Benjamin S. Adamowski charged that the Bieber and Brodkin, who were partners for 40 years, got special treatment from criminal court judges, Bieber responded, that's a lie. I gotta go now. I'm due in felony court to file a motion to fix. Another of their clients was Eco James Coli, a mob labor racketeer, suspected murderer, and convicted hijacker. He also had a conviction for contributing to the delinquency of a minor. In 1952, he was sentenced to 8 to 10 years imprisonment for stealing slot machines from a suburban country club, but the Illinois Supreme Court overturned his conviction in 1955. Despite all of that, Coli served as a secretary treasurer for Chicago Teamsters Union Local 727. Remarkably, he was pretty good at it. Coli instituted pensions, health insurance, and negotiated lucrative contracts for his members during his 20-year tenure as secretary treasurer. In 1969, Coli managed to walk in the Chicago Columbus Day Parade next to Chicago Mayor Richard J. Daley and Illinois Governor Richard Ogilvie. Both Daly and Ogilvy claimed ignorance of Coli's background. In 1952, 
Coli was represented by Brodkin and Bieber in a case that charged him with three armed robberies of American Legion posts and the Olympia Fields Country Club of slot machine robbery. The BNB boys managed to get Coli 24 postponements in the case. Coli's son is John Coli, a high-ranking union official who, in 2022, was sentenced to a year and a half in federal prison for accepting $325,000 in unlawful cash payments from a Chicago business and failing to report the payments on his tax returns. Gangsters trusted because Bieber said, my word is my bond and my life is an open book. Bieber died blind and spent his retirement years in the lobby of the Bismarck Hotel, socializing with new generations of criminal defense lawyers for whom he was a legend. Bieber died in 1981.